when we wrote the screenplay and these characters really started revealing themselves to us, um, my biggest fear was who are the actors that we can get at this micro budget level that would make Lucy become Lucy, fully become Lucy, because Lucy on the surface could be a caricature. Jenny on the surface could be a caricature. Any one of the characters that you see on there can be caricatures. And so when we went out uh, to Mira Sorvino, who was someone that I was praying would say yes to the script, and, and when she responded yes, I, I knew like half of my problems were over and then my other half of my problems were solved with Tammy Blanchard saying yes. So that was a big, big moment for me. The, the, the accent is a Bronx Italian American one. I've played two Bronx Amer Italian American girls before, one in uh, Sweet Nothing by Carrie Winnick and one in Summer of Sam, uh, a Spike Lee's movie. And so I'd had some experience with it. I had tape recorded girls from the Bronx and listened to myself and back and forth and back and forth. But it had been a, a while, maybe like 10 years. So I used Nancy as my new template. And uh, <laughs> I would ask her, i say, how do you say dog? How do you say God? How do you say, you know, because although I am half Italian American, I'm not from the Bronx and I didn't grow up with a sort of discernible accent. Um, and the voice, the voice is sort of, I mean, it, it comes with the personality. You know, she has this very rangy personality where she can be extremely high strung and giddy and then the voice kind of flies up. But then she comes down to earth, she lands and she's very insightful at moments. You know, she's, she has moments of extreme lucidity where she really tells it like it is and kind of nails her sister on what the truth really is. And in those moments, it was a lot lower and more gravelly and everything. But I don't know, some of it, you know, once I get into the character, it's not managed and manipulated, it's the character speaking, so. Uh, part of it was also my fantasy to actually just make a, to, to do something really micro budget and to own it and to control it and, 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 and this, you know, and all the way through distribution. Um, and, you know, we're not alone. I mean, you know, Spike Lee just shot a film for a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, John Sayles starts shooting Tuesday, uh, again, a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Allison Anders made a movie from Kickstarter. Jonathan Demme just shot a film that uh, uh, he shot all in one brownstone. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think this technology is is really, I think, helpful to, to you know, when it, when I can see this movie shot on a still camera, and it looks like this on, in a theater like this, it's just it's it's amazing. So I think that that's the good news. Yeah, it was one room with three walls of windows. And she wanted to shoot two cameras at all the <laughs> So I was like, okay. Um, yeah, that was the challenge. And we were also, sh we shot the whole movie on the Canon 5Ds, which was great because they were small and compact and we, and we could move around. But, you know, to keep the continuity of light during that time and, and the way that Nancy and the actors worked, where they were m more free. So I didn't want to put light stands and things all over the place for them to refrain the Well, you didn't have stuff. room anyway. I mean. We didn't have room. Well, we'd have to be like, okay, don't move here, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, especially with Mira's character, she couldn't go off anywhere. <laughs> so we would just had to be ready to go. And so, yeah, it was very strategic on just, you know, boards and lights and, and basically time of day. You know, I just... Nancy and I spent two weeks in there, you know, um, shot listing. So it was, okay, look at what time, this, this, this. So we were very aware of making the schedule with time of day to use the natural light to our best and, and then little accents here and there. In the beginning, you, I thought people were going to walk out of the theater because it's such a, such a disturbing, hysterical scene. And, you know, all of us, like Jenny, probably want to run from this kind of person in real life because it's too much drama. But then, you know, she turns on a dime and she, she can be really lovable and, and so much fun to play. So, so instinctual and just full of life. There's a real sort of ball of life in her, which, which uh, I really enjoyed having inhabit me. Um, and, uh, you know, I was worried when, uh, when I originally read the script, I said, Nancy, she cries like six <laughs> times or seven times in the film. And, and maybe we should, you know, be careful not to, you know, <laughs> exhaust the audience. And so I think a couple of the crying moments became, became less, uh, they, they, the waterworks didn't happen on those so that we would kind of pace ourselves. But um, so it was a big challenge to, 
because we were shooting these long takes, you know, so they were masters, really, in a way. And so you couldn't stop, and now it's the close-up, so save it for the close-up. It all had to be there. <laughs> so you were starting off laughing and making some crazy joke and observing things, and all of a sudden an emotional moment happens and you had to crumple and, and just have all that pain just kind of come flowing out. So that was the, that was the emotionally very taxing side of playing this role. But, um, but I really do feel the role was a gift. I love this role. <laughs>